to cover and talk about is this update courtesy of the golden hour podcast right this is an interesting update in itself right very 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 interesting in itself i think so anyway because this is an update regarding eric griffin being one of the first people within that little group of guys who's got invited to perform at joe rogan's mothership right comedy mothership out there in austin one of the only people within brenda schaub's kind of extended universe or the tfat k extended universe has been a griffin funnily enough the one person who i think is maybe the one person who is kind of openly hating on the comedy mothership i see that i mentioned before in a previous show where he was basically saying the mothership and you know in quotation marks and acting like masks sorry quotation marks and acting as if he didn't know about it when he clearly did because he hadn't been booked there i guess behind the scenes his book or his agent was working tirelessly and got him a little um eric griffin and friends performance to go and do there in a few weeks so congratulations to him but it's no denying that the two other guys that he does a show with you would, could argue are way closer to joe than eric griffin is and you'd think if those two guys were drama free and if brendan especially was rated by rogan as a stand-up you'd think that they should have priority to perform at joe rogan's comedy mothership way before eric griffin does you'd think that but obviously as we know Chris Lee has been accused of being a diddler, aka pedo. Brendan is Brendan, surrounded in drama. You know, he threw out that comment about Joe Rogan slanging dick and whatnot. And I don't think his relationship with Joe has been ever the same ever since then. And I'm sure other things in between. So they've been relegated to the doldrums. Chris Lee probably hasn't got any chance of appearing on that stage ever again because it feels like Joe Rogan's basically excommunicated him and deleted him from his brain and he's not going to be allowed back on the pod so there's no chance he's getting back on the comedy um, club and clearly, 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 clearly Brendan Schaub is definitely not rated by Rogan. So this is a clip taken from the Golden Hour at the beginning of the show where for some reason Eric Griffin starts reading out the dates of his up and coming shows and he then reveals that he's going to be booked at a comedy mothership and Chris D'Elia and Brenda Schaub go in this weird congratulate con they're kind of congratulatory a little bit, but they're also a little bit, you know, sad, annoyed, coping, pissed off. And just trying to work through their emotions in real time as one of their close friends, close friends is announcing something pretty cool. And he's trying to play it down because he knows, you know, he really shouldn't be getting the gig before them if they're meant to be closer to Joe Rogan. But things have changed. This is the clip. Let's go. Oh, are they? What? I mean, that's the AC. Is it a yeah, they, collab? Well, no, they just cut <laughs> the door. Eric yeah, Griffin is. Just... Okay, so Louisville Comedy <laughs> Club. Okay, okay. I guess he's doing that on purpose because they're talking about shoes and he doesn't give a fuck. And he just decided to get up all these dates on his phone and read them all out like the grumpy old man that he is. Uh, <laughs> April 20th wow. through the 22nd. And then the Comedy Mothership. <laughs> I'm going to be at the Mothership in Austin. Oh, cool. 28th through the 30th. Uh, is that like a yeah. headlining thing that you're doing there? <laughs> yeah. Or what, oh, oh, cool. Go five shows, yeah. So, and it's on the weekend? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. What room? Like they have... <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Lee asking questions like a fed. Or asking questions like, you know when you were a kid and you went to ask your mom about what she was making, but you're afraid that she may ask you to go buy more ingredients. Hey, big up Ricky Picture. Appreciate you, brother. Here's to the downfall. Yes. You know, the eventual downfall. Big up Ricky Picture. Appreciate you. For the eventual downfall of Ago, but picture you. Um, Chris Lee's asking questions like, you know when your mom used to ask you questions? You don't have to ask your mom questions when she's making food because she may go and ask you to go buy more ingredients. And you also were afraid because you're just shy. You're like, mom, what does that taste like? Oh, is it? What is that kind of taste like? Is that like pepperoni? Is that like sausages? Is that like chicken? Is that like that? Oh, all right then. Well, that's kind of nice. Is it nice? You know those kind of questions? <laughs> he's asking like a little kid. <laughs> oh, he must be so brutal to take, man. Eric Griffin of all of them is the one to get booked first. This must be burning Chris's soul and it also must be burning Brendan's soul way more because Eric i think he's a bit bitter anyway he's a bit angry a bit of a bitter dude and clearly comes across as a bit of a hater and maybe has said some disparaging stuff about rogan probably right but he's still getting booked imagine that like they're like what the fuck you know what i mean it's so funny anyway have like different rooms right i have no idea they have like oh, cool. a main room and a that's pretty room. cool man like the store i don't no, know i know but i but like... they, don't they have so they have two, <laughs> two rooms okay yeah. he's in the main room got yeah. it 
That's awesome. And then I'm probably going to do Kill Tony that Monday also, but whatever. <laughs> Before right. it or after it? After, after. He does it on Monday. Yeah. Right, right. So Mondays is tough. Yeah. It's fine. Well, it's fine. I have to get an early for Look at Brendan trying to change the subject. Mondays is tough. Let's talk about the comedy mothership more. Let's talk about Eric Griffin getting booked at the mothership before you two guys. Let's not switch it to Mondays. Why to get yeah. here for this? You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> Look at that. I've never seen Brendan so quiet. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of more respectful. It's kind of more respectable from Rogan that he's doing what he's doing with Brendan. Where I would, I would believe this kind of theory that's been floated, where he's basically told him, "Hey, you're not funny enough at the moment to play at my club. Get funnier, and then you'll play." Because there was that story, there was that thing that BGL said in the stream. BGL said once in a stream that. He heard no. Did Brendan tell him or he heard one or the other? BJ basically said that Joe told Brendan to chill out with the clips or to have better quality control on it. Like Joe Rogan basically said, "Hey, Brendan, chill out with the comedy bits that you're putting out because they're not doing any favors." I think because after you saw that Greg Abbott bit, you may know Rogan's got. You know Brendan's got that Greg Abbott. You know, have you not guys seen it? The Greg Abbott bit. Have I got his Instagram here? Yeah, I have. Please. Oh no, let me get another window because that's another thing I needed. Brendan Shaw's Instagram, right? There's a Greg, Ag Greg Abbott bit he's got in it. I think Rogan saw this and told Brendan, hey, stop doing these flipping clips because they're making you look bad. Have better quality control. Tighten up the bits before you pull out these clips. And I think it's this what kind of broke the camel's back, according to BGL. Look at this. This though, I would trade my governor for your governor Abbott. I don't agree with his abortion stuff. It's like, how is he gonna have an opinion on abortion when his wiener doesn't work? <laughs> You can't even have sex, bro. <laughs> Why are you chiming into this thing? You're not getting invited to the orgy, Mr. Abbott. Brilliant like comedy. Game of Thrones. Only 1,000 of right? them. <laughs> Where's your hordor, bitch? Remember, there's only 1,000 of these guys, according to Rogan. Only 1,000 good ones. My only problem with him is, you know how he got paralyzed, right? A giant oak tree fell on him. Terrible tragedy. You ever seen an oak tree fall fast? <laughs> no! No! God, no! Why me? No! Move out the way, bitch! Also, if you don't like him, easiest politician of all time to assassinate. Easy. <laughs> easy to wheelchair taxes! With the Houston traffic? It's so easy! Mr. Governor, nice to meet you. Traffic. Game over. I do like text. Anyway, so allegedly, 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 Rogan was like, hey, you're not funny enough. You can't perform in my club. And I personally think that actually makes, what's his face? Joe look better because it basically means that he just doesn't book his friends because they're his friends. He actually does have some level of, um, he does kind of operate by, hey, you have to be actually good at what you do before I put you on. And this clearly, I think, was a message that was relayed to Brendan because Brendan looks like the type of person because I'm not that person. I'm never going to ask people for things, right? Or ask, as someone said in the comments, I say, I'm never going to ask anyone for anything, especially when it comes to like putting me on a show or something. I detest that sort of I think that stuff is kind of lame. So I will go out of my way not to do it because I want to get given it the same way other people get given it based on their talent and based on being a draw, as Brendan would say. But Brendan looks like the person who would ask a friend, hey, can I come on your show? So it wouldn't surprise me if he did text Rogan and said, hey, can I, can I perform at the Comedy Mothership? He got aired a few days and then Rogan ripped back a long message kind of detailing, hey, you know, I love you. I'm a good, you're a good guy. I got your back. You know, I'm going to ride for you, but you're just not funny enough. You simply do not matter. We don't know who you are. You're not a draw B. Go back to drawing board. And the next day, Eric Griffin comes in, who is the perpetual hater. Look at his face. He doesn't even look like he's smiling, right, about the gig. <laughs> and he got it before him. And Chris Alea, who drug and used to say was a murderer, is now being, you know, labeled as a pedo. So he's not going to be playing anytime soon. And he's not playing there. Absolutely hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. So that's going to be a nightmare, but it is what it is. Oh, Chris, your, your tickets just went on sale, right? Yeah, Chris. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I want to. Okay. Look, he's such a subject. He, he, let, he let Eric have three minutes. Is Eric kind of looking a bit weird? He let having two minutes or something of promo for his pretty important show playing at you know maybe the most important comedy club in the country now in america right with joe reagan's flipping comedy mothership and he gave him a minute and as soon as he said that he switched over to chris hey chris why don't you tell us about your shows 
I don't want to be made feel more uncomfortable that Eric Griffin's playing this show. Fuck Eric Griffin. Tell me about your shows. I find this hilarious. Okay, okay. Let me get them up here. Because <laughs> okay. there are a few cities. Just a few? I, ChrisLea.com, you know, I know you hate when I say that my website, but... Just go there. Yeah, uh, where? Up there? Yeah, go to ChrisLea.com. Yeah. So, hey, how then, was you guys this weekend? True. No, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I still, I still, I still maintain that I'm one of the only people in the world who cares about this stuff and it legitimately drives me insane. Most of these guys, it does not matter when they say these dates because if you want to buy the tickets you'll buy them if you don't you won't why not just say hey i'm playing in a city near you sometime very soon check out my website for more information why do they need to list all the dates like what's this obsession with saying i'm playing april 11th fight spokane blah blah blah, blah. like no one remembers this shit just say go to my website and check out the dates if you want to play if you want to buy them tickets buy the tickets if not keep it moving this reading out the dates thing is so annoying legitimately annoying a stop with the dates enough stop but i guess they do it because it's a weird flex because they want to be made feel important it's like um it's like oh if you got more it's like maybe it's a goal of a comedian when you first start out you may have two dates that you promote in your podcast then you get better and you have like five then you have ten and all of a sudden you're doing tours but it's like look if i'm listening to your pod and i and i like what you and i like what i hear i'm gonna want to snoop around i'm gonna check out your instagram i might go on your twitter i might check you out on different you know interview places and stuff and eventually i'll get on your website i don't need you to tell me your dates and i'm gonna be like oh my god he's in washington i'm gonna be there we don't care or i know i don't care anyway maybe some of you guys out there care but i know i don't it gets on my nerves i flipping hate it and i wish it all flipping sharp about it but i guess it's part of the flipping game i guess it's part of the flipping game